Hello, and welcome to a tutorial on how to use Jmagin's SV tool, SVT. This guide is for the 0.6.2 version of the tool, so yours might look a little bit different, but the basic functionality should be the same. When you first open the tool, this is how it may look. To open the difficulty you want to create SV for, you can either click the Select Map File button and navigate to the file you want to open, or simply drag the file into the program. You can check which map you are editing by looking at the status bar along the bottom of the tool. The most basic function of this tool is to add speedups and slowdowns to a map. To do this, simply create two inherited points, one for the highest SV you want and one for the lowest. Copy these points into the tool, adjust the settings to fit what you want to do, and hit apply. You now have SV changes on your map. This is how every instruction you do with this tool will work, whether you are creating basic SV, changing volumes, or equalizing SV over multiple timing points. If you want to adjust the change you made, simply repeat the steps from before and hit apply. The tool automatically overwrites any SV that was previously placed. You can also apply multiple changes at once by copying multiple pairs of inherited points into the tool. Make sure that you are using pairs of points, since the tool will only work if the number of lines is even. The tool will also save a backup of the difficulty in the same location as the tool every time you apply a change. So if OS crashes, if the tool somehow screws up, or if your difficulty is corrupted in some way, you can recover the file. Note the box that is labeled Preview Output. This creates a difficulty named Preview that the SV will be applied to. If you uncheck this box, the difficulty will not be made and the changes will instead be applied directly to the difficulty you're editing. I recommend unchecking this box since the preview difficulty is kind of annoying, but if you're doing any insane SV or something that you are unsure about, you can use this feature. The Apply To section is self-explanatory, but I will explain it anyways. The Apply section determines what is being changed, the SV or the volumes. If you wish to only apply a change to the SV and not the volumes, then uncheck the volumes box and vice versa. The To section determines what parts of the map get an inherited point. There's not really any reason you would want to change these from the default settings, but they're there for you anyway. The most complicated section, and thus the section some people may never touch, is the Options section. Here you can determine the settings for the offset, buffer, BPM scaling, and exponential functions. The offset setting is used for placing the SV before or after the notes. You can make it negative to have the SV be placed before the notes, or positive to have it placed after for some reason. However, I would recommend leaving this setting at zero because of the tool's built-in buffer setting. The buffer setting is there to ensure that unsnapped objects are still detected and have SV applied to them, such as when a note is unsnapped one millisecond before the first SV line. This prevents the note from accidentally not having SV applied to it, since the buffer looks for objects 3 milliseconds before and after the anticipated time the SV should be placed. You can also adjust this, but you probably have no reason to. The Ignore BPM option is for dealing with making changes over variable timing points. The basic idea of this option is that, when the box is unchecked, the SV changes are placed in reference to the first and last SV lines, regardless of what is in between them. That means if you place a 1.0 times SV line at the beginning of a speedup and a 1.5 times line at the end, the tool will calculate the SV necessary to speed up from 1.0 times to 1.5 times over whatever is between those two times, preserving the 1.5 times line to be applied to the timing section it's placed in. If you check this box, then the SV will be calculated in reference to the timing section the first SV line is in. So if you place a 1.0 times line at the beginning of a speedup and a 1.5 times line at the end, the tool will calculate whatever 1.5 times the BPM the SV started in, find what that is in terms of the final timing section, and then create the speedup from there, so the last SV line will be lower than 1.5 times. Of course, if you're doing a slowdown, this will be inverted, and the final SV will be higher than what you put in the tool. Depending on what you want to do with your map, either of these methods may be used, but I would recommend keeping this box unchecked because it's much more intuitive that way. If you want to equalize the SV over a variable BPM section, you can keep the ignore BPM box checked, create the same SV line on either side of the section you want to equalize, and then hit apply. The notes will now be whatever speed you told them to be with the first timing point over any BPM between the two lines.
And finally, the Exponential SV option. You can check the EXP SV box to enable Exponential SV and input a value into the EXP dialog box to adjust the curve. By default, the value is 0.5, which is optimal for slowdowns, but you can also change it to 2, which is useful for speedups. But of course, you should play around with the values to see which best fits your map. If you make the value 1, it will be linear, for obvious reasons. Here is a quick example of what the difference between linear and exponential SV is. As you can see, on an extreme slowdown with a 0.5 exponent, the notes are much easier to read, and on a speedup with a 2 exponent, the ending has a much greater effect than it does with a linear speedup. And that covers everything the tool can currently do. Thanks for watching, and happy velocitizing!